Over the last few years, you've probably noticed ghost kitchens popping up all over Winnipeg. A ghost kitchen is a restaurant that only offers delivery or takeout. There's no dining room, no service staff, just cooks. By sharing a commercial kitchen space, a chef can cut down on costs, letting them run a flexible kitchen on a tight budget. But are real ghosts involved? They should be. <laughs> Welcome to Ghost Kitchens, the first ever cooking competition show to be judged entirely by ghosts. I'm your host, Angie St. Mars. I'm dying to know, what is Winnipeg's greatest ghost kitchen? Well, only a real ghost can be the judge of that. I've enlisted three paranormal experts to help me find, see, and hear a ghost to judge this competition. Three ghost kitchen chefs will meet at a haunted location to prepare a dish for a ghost and receive their judgment. The chef deemed most worthy will receive the ghost kitchen trophy of diabolical delights. Now come with me, the hour grows late. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Who are you? Hi, my name is EJ Chua. I am one of the chefs of Bao and Manila Nights. And I love making modern Filipino cuisine. How did you come to start working out of a ghost kitchen? To be honest, I didn't know how to cook when I started the culinary program at Red River. I was like, I want to do Filipino cuisine with this kind of like cooking techniques. I love being creative. That's what keeps me going. COVID happened got laid off and then we started doing the ghost kitchen. It's exciting and it's fun. It's, it's always been fun. Were you afraid that there would be ghosts in the kitchen? Ghosts in the kitchen? Yes, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> would you say you're afraid of ghosts? Yes and no. It depends on the ghost. <laughs> what do you like about working out of a ghost kitchen? Um, for me, it's a dishwasher. <laughs> That's your favorite part? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I think so. Have you thought at all about what you want to prepare for the ghost? I think so. I hope the ghost would like the food I'll be making for it. Can you show me something in the kitchen? For sure. Let's go. So this is the Kaho's kitchen where we'll be making our food today. So this one is a egg roll wrapper where you can just get from an Asian store. Do you ever make these wrappers yourself? Nope, I don't. It's, <laughs> it's too much work. So what you do, measure out three fingers from the bottom, and then that's where you put the filling. What is this, like I have newt? So that is actually called dinuguan. It's a Filipino stew. It's traditionally made with pork, carrots, vegetables. This one is kind of like my take on this dish. Pinch the sides and fold it over. Roll it all the way to the top. And then you kind of seal it with this water. This magic water? This magic water. I think yours is better than mine, I think. <laughs> no one's squeezing out the side. Oh no. <laughs> and that's your lumpia. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. EJ, thanks so much for having me. Thank you. I've got to take off. All right. Oh. Uh, uh. Uh, can I borrow that? Thank you. 
I found my first chef. Now I'm looking for a ghost with an open schedule. A free spirit. For a ghost, judging a cooking competition from beyond the grave might be a big ask. Out of respect for the spirit's time, we're gonna go to the ghosts. Here. I'm Matt Comus, I'm a ghost historian, and today I want to show you Seven Oaks House, the oldest and most haunted house in all of Winnipeg. Goody! Follow me. Welcome to Seven Oaks House. So I mentioned this is the oldest house in Winnipeg. It was the home of the Inkster family. So John and Mary Inkster and some of their children featured here. They seem to have maybe a few people hanging around in the house. Now one of the things in this room is the mannequin. The house now works as a museum, and the museum staff are getting calls in the middle of the night that this one room with all the mannequins, the motion detectors started going off. But they weren't too sure what to think of it. Well, they moved all the mannequins out to the garage. No more alarms. About a week later, the alarm in the garage starts going off all the time. Have you ever seen one of the mannequins move? Can't say I've seen them move, but I've definitely heard sounds here. Footsteps right above us, people walk on the second floor, even though the house is empty. So you definitely hear, uh, hear the spirits that seem to still be here. And just watch your step. So one way people often like to remember when relatives passed away was they would take their hair and turn it into wreaths, uh, jewelry, uh, bracelets. Is that horse made out of skin? It is. And sometimes people have actually seen the horse moving. They even have marbles that are supposed to be kept in a dish, but sometimes the marbles have been scattered all over the floor. How do you think that happens? There's a ghost coming out at night. That was comfortable back then. Yes, people were also a little bit smaller, so... Do you think the fact that ghosts are so tiny makes them less scary? Yeah, maybe. Well, why don't we go into the kitchen? Oh, hello! That's rude. So we're heading into the dining room now. <gasps> More human hair art? They did like it. Nice. I heard someone died here. Someone did die in this very room. In fact, probably 12 people have died in this house. But this room clearly has the most tragic story. Right in the dining room during one of these family dinners. The son-in-law of the Inksters, a man called William McMurray, he was here with his wife, Harriet, who was their daughter. They had been away, they came back to the, the community, so everyone was having a big dinner, lots of food, laughter, fun times. But suddenly, William starts coughing and grabbing at his throat, and he is choking. Now the Heimlich maneuver, not a thing yet. No one, you know, no one had invented it. So he ends up basically falling down dead during the dinner. So they think his spirit, though, might still, uh, might still be here. Do you think he'll be joining us at the finale? Well, he might. It's quite, it's quite possible. They know with William, they actually think he sometimes comes out and makes his sort of presence known. Uh, they were holding it's a perfect. William was dining during his final moments. Three beautifully cooked dishes would surely summon his taste buds here in his very own dining room. I wrote two books. Haunted Winnipeg and Haunted Manitoba. And Seven Oaks House is so haunted, it's the only building that appears in both. What do you think the ghosts might do if they don't like what we prepared for them? Well, sometimes we've actually heard like sounds of things smashing or breaking. Have you ever broken anything and blamed it on a ghost? I have not. You have to be very, very careful in a place what like this. What kind of ghost do you think you'll be? Like flirty, rude? That I would be. I think I'd be kind of Relax more. How do you think a ghost would let me know if they thought I was cute? The witching hour is upon us. I must away. Uh, any final words? Well, I don't. I just read you a little bit from the book. Uh. Unexplained footsteps at Seven Oaks House. A woman vanishing into thin air at the hotel for Gary. Spirits reaching out from beyond the grave at Pantages Theater. Just what is happening in Winnipeg's heritage buildings at night? Early Winnipeg was a booming city full of excitement with no shortage of murderers. Sorry, no shortage of murderers. Ooh. Sorry. Yeah. 
I'm ready to knock at William's door, but will he answer? I need a way to see his ghost and hear what he has to say. Join me next time when we talk to our next chef and paranormal expert. But until then, lock your doors and say your prayers.